In 2023 and 2024, the ELF has announced they're going to be trying to launch a fantasy football kind of uh, initiative within the league. And today I just wanted to take a break from the receivers and, well, I'll finish off because, you know, it's, it's a long one. You know, this tier four, it's, um, it is long. So I wanted to take a little break from that and give you five players that I'm definitely going to try and draft if it comes up to a fantasy football format. If you are unaware of who I am, my name is Matt Bressington. I'm a European-American football scout. I've been scouting since I was 18 years old. If it's your first time uh, seeing my content, like, subscribe, turn the notifications on, whatever you have to do to do that. So you can uh, not miss my next upload. Because I'm going to be uploading a lot over the next few days, just on topics about the ELF. And especially during the season too. You know, I have a lot of training coming up soon, which I cannot enclose just yet. But it means I'll be able to give guys a lot of in-depth looks at their games. Uh, and, and looks into schemes and I'm really really excited about that part of um, my progression as an American football scout and I wanted to make this a, a, like this whole channel is based just off of me putting my scout work into content for people to enjoy so that's my only motive here there's no clickbait there might be a little bit of clickbait there's not like any means for me to be deceptive you know I, you know, I don't make any money off of this so you know European American football scouting is very limited in its uh, cash, so you know it's, it's genuine. It's all done out of love of the game. So please enjoy the video, and thank you very much for letting me have a part of your time. As you are probably aware, if you're watching this video, I've been breaking down a lot of receivers, and uh, I've got about, you know, I've got a lot. So I will be trying to limit myself on receivers. So I've only picked one, kind of the player I feel is probably the best receiver in terms of fantasy football. We'll get to him in a minute. So. I wanted to just limit the amount of receivers to just a couple and then mostly go QBs and running backs. So it's only five. You know, I'll probably do a part two of this. I have a few other projects in the works. So let's just get straight into it and start off with number five. At number five, we have Donovan Isom of the Berlin Thunder. Of course, I've talked extensively about his just in crazy, you know, amazing receiver room, how he has so many different weapons that he can use to uh, piece up offensives. And a lack of run game, I think, kind of helps that. Not that Berlin have no run game, because they definitely do. But just, you know, the pass game is the obvious f uh, focus. He has a massive arm. You know, he's 6'5", he's a real big dude, like two, 240, I think he's listed at. And surprisingly can run pretty well. Like, he had 319 yards last season and had 10 touchdowns for the Berlin Rebels. He is obviously a sneak threat. On the goal line, I don't think there's really many people that are going to be able to stand with him. Uh, so, you know, I expect that to be a big part of his productivity. There are some accuracy concerns with 59.7% uh, as his completion rate, which is, you know, not, you know, it's fine, but ideally you want that to get up. 26 touchdowns to four interceptions last season and 268 yards per game. So, you know, he definitely has potential to be the top fantasy QB in the league just because of how many weapons he has. I think he's going to spread the ball out, hence why I haven't got one of his receivers on this, because there are so many of them that I think all of them are going to kind of, you know, lower the numbers, especially if he finds one target he really likes. But, you know, I can't predict that just yet. We'll have to wait until the season starts. So, he is uh, sky high, <laughs> you know. He's so big and so powerful and so, like, just... He scares me <laughs> just looking at him because he's that big. But we'll see how he kind of turns out in this league. And he has an amazing O-line as well. Lawrence Cornwall, Cornwall Baptiste uh, tackle is going to be a really, really big uh, player for him. You know, former IPP. Uh, I've seen him in person. He's just, you know, he's so fundamentally excellent. So I expect him to be, you know, easily the top QB in terms of fantasy. This is my second time talking about Robert Ty's kind of style of play. So if you want to check out my first time where I go a little bit more in depth, you can see that on the uh, wide receiver tier list rankings. He's on tier one. Uh, but Robert Ty, you know, he's a very well-established player in the league. He had 1,100 yards last season, 14 touchdowns, and a near 73% catch rate. So he is a, a phenomenal receiver. He's a red zone threat. He's experienced in the scheme. You know, he's got his QB back, and he's, he's got a very improved O-line. Like, his O-line is insane. So I think he doesn't miss a step i think he continues putting up maybe even 12, 000, 1200 yards twelve thousand yards now that would be a season but 1200 yards uh you know he's big plays durable he played every game last season great hands great concentration great feet uh and i i just i think he's the best fantasy receiver in the league 
Honestly, he just has such a varied skill set and such a high level of production that I don't really think there's any receivers that can compete with him. I guess we'll see. Maybe the, the kind of amount of receivers that they have in Ryan, the amount of weapons they have in Ryan might affect him negatively. You know, less touch to the ball, less opportunities to make yards. But I don't see that happening. You know, he's a, he's a favoured target of the QB, so time will tell. But I, I can't see him missing a drop, and I think he'll get over 1,200 yards this season. I don't think it was ever in doubt I was going to have Sandro Platzko on this one, to be honest. You know, he's coming back from his time with the New York Giants. He's the best weapon, in my opinion, in the league. I expect him to be absolutely everywhere on the offense. You know, running back, wide receiver. I expect him to come in motions. I expect him to take some wildcat snaps. I, uh, You know, kick returns, punt returns. He's going to be everywhere. You know, he could very much break a lot of season records this year. Madre Lana had a crazy year in the first year. I think people forget they got 2,000 yards in, like, under 10 games. And, like, ridiculous um, yards per carry and touchdowns. But I think that some of those records could be beaten with Sandro this year. You know, he is phenomenal. He's still young. You know, he's looking to bounce back. He hasn't played in a while. You know, that hunger's probably there. He's, he's a great athlete, great burst. Um, you know, he hasn't played in a while. I think that is probably the biggest knock on his game. But the last time he played was in the NFL. So I don't think that that should be really a massive factor. And like I said, you know, he's got the hunger back. He's back in his hometown um, team with people that he knows and, you know, his brother. You know, I think he'll really enjoy this season. I think that he will break at least one or two yards. Uh, one, two yards, probably expect that during the year. One or two records during the season in some capacity, maybe like a total yardage or, you know, maybe even a rushing that you might get. You might get 2,000 yards. You never know. I expect him to get over 1,000 yards pretty comfortably within the first, I'm going to say, seven games he gets over over 1,000 yards. Kind of go on a limb there and predict that. But he'll be the number one pick in like everyone's fantasy draft. So, you know, kind of had to include him just to have as, as a formality rather than a uh, a hot take. Luke Zoradka is next, the longtime QB of the Milano Seaman. You know, he's been there for years, so the whole offense is built around him. So I don't think he'll lose a step in terms of producing in that offense. You know, six foot five, he can run pretty well. We saw that against Florence in the championship game. 64.2% accuracy, 35 touchdowns to four interceptions. So he obviously has the, you know, productivity and the ability to perform. He's probably, in my opinion, a top three QB in the league. He has more options to spread the ball around with some Sierra and John. You know, last year he only had Markel, but this season he has another weapon. I'm a little bit concerned about the lack of deep threat. You know, he didn't pass to his outside receivers all that much during last season, uh, and a lot of them are returning this year. So I'm concerned there might be a lack of weapons for him. Uh, run game, he's got kind of a, a running back by committee. Some of them, like Ali Khalifa, can receive out of the backfield. So I think that will help him. They spent so much on the offensive line this year with Thomas Felicia at left tackle and then Lewis Thomas, in my opinion, probably the best guy in the league or one of them at least. Uh, from Hamburg, they've got Harry Sayer in the right tackle or probably right guard position. And they've got Danny Marshall, who's a capable blocker. So they've invested a lot in getting him help on the offensive line. And Danny Marshall is a pretty decent receiving tight end too. So I'm expecting him to continue his performance. He does favor one target, as I said, with... Markel Castle getting all of the production last year. But considering Jean is very, very similar to Markel, I don't think that he'll lose a step in that. And I think he'll just kind of be a quite a seamless transition. So he'll probably be one of my favorites for the top fantasy football QBs this year. And let's just see how he does. Rounding up the five, we have Silas Nasita, the running back from the Health of It Guards. He is the best player in that team. You know, maybe other than Colin Hill or QB, I think those two are pretty comparable. Not in terms of play style, but you know what I mean, in terms of, terms of quality. He has pass game usage, he can receive out of backfield, he's extremely explosive in open space, uh, and can extend plays inside and outside the line of scrimmage. He does get long runs and he does get long touchdowns. You know, he only played two seasons last sorry, two games last season with the with the Dragons in Austria. Had two hundred and eighty five yards, six touchdowns, and a seven point two yards per carry. So he obviously knows how to you know, he, he's very, very good. He has a wide array of, of moves. I wrote about it earlier uh, this week. You know, he can use a spin move, he can use a jump cut, he can just you know, he creates really, really good angles, puts defenders off balance, and then with that explosiveness can just, you know, come through. 
So, with that 7.2 yards per carry, I think it will go down, naturally. But, because of how explosive he is, I expect him to carry on picking up the chunk yardage and extending these big plays. So, I don't think he'll be too worrisome. You know, I think he will be fine. And I think he'll be possibly a 1,000 yard rusher. He does hold the ball a little low for my liking. You know, so he might have some fumbles, which would be really, really bad for fantasy football. But... He knows how to find the end zone. He knows how to extend a play. He knows how to hit a hole. So I think that he rounds out the list quite well. And he'll probably be among my top list of running backs to draft this season. That just concludes our draft. You know, I only wanted to do it short, sweet, and just kind of give a little bit of uh, filler content until I had the next tier list of the wide receivers sorted out. Uh, if you guys have any more suggestions you want me to cover, if you want me to go more in depth on certain players and certain schemes, I would love to do that kind of thing during the season and just kind of build my repertoire up. Uh, you know, this is a reflection of my scout work and just kind of putting in some of the stuff that I have into uh, into content for everyone to enjoy. So let's just go for a good season. You know, it's less than 10 days now into the start of the year. And that's where I can start hopefully getting uh, some more stuff out um, in terms of, you know, breaking down certain players and certain storylines in the year that I would love to cover. So, yeah, it's going to be a very, really, I'm really, really exciting getting really into it. This fantasy football thing is really exciting as well. You know, they're thinking about betting, but, you know, that has its own video idea. But, yeah, very, very, very excited. You can tell I'm very excited. So, you know, these are my top five players that I'm going to get in my drafts if I can get them. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And I hope you follow my advice on drafts. And see you later.